Hi guys, Steady Eddie here, this time in the heart of the lush English countryside. It's spring, it's a lovely day and well I'm having a nice little walk in the countryside. So how is everyone? You haven't heard from me for a while so I suppose you could say this is my comeback video. All I can say is I hope everyone is keeping well. I'm glad that you're here today. Let's have a little walk and a talk. Now I've got to say straight up that this is not going to be a cheerful video, okay? Uh, there's going to be plenty of doom and gloom in this video. Now I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, oh no, we've got enough doom and gloom, we don't need any from you. But the fact is, well, don't, I don't like doom and gloom any more than anyone else, but the situation right now with travel is pretty miserable. And one of my favourite sayings is, you have to be realistic. So, if you're upset about a bit, of, bit more doom and gloom talk, then don't think of it as doom and gloom. Think of it as being realistic. You know, it's, it's, there's no point being cheerful about the most negative of situations. So anyway, let's talk about this traffic light system that, you know, they're going on about right now. Yes, you did hear right. I said traffic lights. I mean, the idea of travel now, in the UK we have this sort of traffic light system of green, amber and red. Well, I suppose the idea of waiting to travel abroad, uh, you know, waiting at traffic lights is kind of surreal, but then when you think about it, the whole whole situation, the whole year is, is being kind of surreal in that kind of way. So let's talk about what it means for UK people who want to travel. Well, first of all, the the red light countries. No, I don't mean that kind of red light. I mean, you know, the on the red list, the government red list. Well, these are the ones where if you go to a country that is deemed to have plenty of the old antivirus such as the South American countries or Africa, then you will have to quarantine in a state hotel on your return. You're advised not to go there, but if you do make the decision to go to one of those countries, uh, then on the way back, you'll have to quarantine in a government state hotel for 10 days at your expense, which is expensive. Last time I looked, it was 1,750 quid for the 10 days. Ouch, who the hell wants to pay that? So, after the red light, the amber countries. Now, what exactly is an amber light country? Well, that, that is a country that is not really that bad. Probably doesn't have too much of the old antivirus and doesn't pose such a great risk, but it poses some risk. Um, well, Spain, for example, is one of the amber list countries right now. Now, here, with, with this, you have to... With an amber list country, what you have to do is self-isolate, not in a government registered hotel, expensive, but you have to isolate for 10 days at home on your return. Now that's bad enough, I mean, for people who, you know, have a tight working schedule to go on holiday and then have to stay at home for 10 days self-isolating. Well, that's not much fun, is it? You know, nobody needs that. What intrigues me about this is how the government enforce this uh, self-isolating at home. I mean, how did he go about that, proving that you, you are staying at home for 10 days on your return from a country like Spain? Well, from what I hear, it's up to your neighbours to grass on you. And if you've got neighbours like mine, they probably would. Uh, but apparently the authorities, what they do is they come round to your house during that 10-day period. They come round to your house sporadically when you least expect it and uh, well if, if that's the case i mean i had to isolate you know stay at home for 10 days uh, and they came around well i'd, I'd be friendly I'd, I'd probably invite them in for tea and biscuits uh, but if you don't really want to do that what you could always do instead is you know just don't answer the door to them you, you know and uh, if anyone questions about it later why you didn't answer the door to them you, you just say well well i thought they were jehovah's witnesses so i didn't want to let them in Okay, so to a green light country, or a green list if you prefer. Now, as somebody who's already had the two vaccines, then a green list country is exactly what I need. All the green list country requires is that you have that awful, irritating PCR test within 72 hours of travel. I think you'd have one on your return as well, but there's no isolation involved anyway. Now, a green list country, well, that sounds up my street. 
the problem is there are only 12 green list uh, countries on the list and of the 12 only one of them is any good and that country is uh, a country called Portugal Portugal now for those used to my YouTube channel uh, which is based mainly in Southeast Asia and is about Southeast Asia mainly you may wonder why I should want to go to Portugal well, I don't know, the way I'm feeling right now, you've got to go somewhere. But Portugal, I mean, let's understand, before I had my YouTube channel, I did lots of travelling. You know, South America, you know, even touched Africa, Europe. Europe is a fantastic continent. In fact, most of the world's history originates from Europe. And Portugal, I mean, I want to travel around Brazil, which is a magnificent country. I suppose you could easily say that Portugal is very much the mother of Brazil. After all, they, that they gave them the language and all of that. So, you know, Portugal is, you know, is a... I've never been there before, but... I've always thought that it looks like a really delightful country to visit. It's, on, it's the only one on the green list that's even worth considering. So that's exactly what I've been doing recently, considering Portugal. So what exactly would be the appeal of Portugal for someone like me, you know, an independent traveller? Well, you, you know, Portugal, I've seen the pictures of it. I've heard some really, really good reports about it. We're now coming up to the month of June, which is uh, when that part of the world, the climate is probably fantastic. It's got plenty of culture, it's got scenery, it's got beaches. I've heard, and I've never been there, don't forget, that it's not too expensive. And it's probably got nice little villages, which I kind of enjoy. And it's also got castles. I mean, castles. I mean, I just love castles. I mean, who doesn't love castles? Apparently, uh, Portugal's got an abundance of them. Yes, I just love having to wander around castles. I mean, who, who doesn't? I mean, you know, you you climb up the walls, you you get up to the uh, to, to the roof at roof of the castles, and when when you go through those wonderful stately rooms, you know, you just want to you just want to grab hold of those swords and other armory off the walls of the castle, and you know, let your imagination run wild and pretend that you're Errol. Flynn. It, well, well, of course, in my case, uh, it, it wouldn't be the first time I've been compared to Errol Flynn, um, but that's another story. So, to cut a long story short, uh, Portugal looks good. It's of the green list countries, it's the only one worth considering. So, the last uh, week or so, I've been scouting the internet, reading reviews, best places to go. Uh, best hotels to stay in, that sort of thing. And yeah, my, my enthusiasm for Portugal is really, really built up. I watched a few YouTube videos. Yeah, I could easily spend a month there. But, you know, then I thought, is that really, really the country for me? Well, right, it, it may have been at one time, because I used to travel a lot of places like that. But I've changed. I've changed a bit. I'm older now. I think I've seen all the castles and historical places that are, and cultural places that I really want to visit. And to be truthful with you, I've said, you know, I've had enough of them. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, Portugal is the only decent country that's worth mentioning. That says a lot for the rest of them. And the true fact is that the only countries I really, really feel comfortable with in this day and age are my old Asian favourites. You know, Vietnam, Cambodia. Philippines, Thailand, of course. The truth is, I'm not the traveller that I used to be. You know, go anywhere, see a new place. I've seen all the places I want to go to. And really, I just want to go to the places that I feel comfortable with. And the, the places that I, I know that I'm going to enjoy. I'm sure I'm not alone when I say that what's happened in the past year has changed a lot of travellers, even experienced travellers. It has zapped the confidence of travellers. Simply because you never know what's going to happen next. I mean, you know, a, a green list country today could be a red list country tomorrow and then you might be having to stay in that nauseating uh, quarantine hotel at a ridiculous cost. You do, in this long run and soap opera, things are changing all the time and you just never know what's going to happen next. And really, when I was dithering over the internet, over flights and hotels in Portugal, I was kind of disappointed in myself to eventually decide against it. I don't dither when I'm booking flights and hotels. You know, I'm, I'm an articulate traveller. I make my mind up, I get on the internet, I 
look at the flights, look at the hotels, make me mind up, Bob's your uncle, get it done and dusted. No change of plan, no putting it off till next year. So what's happened? Yeah, I've changed, dithering over, booking a flight to a country and then eventually deciding that it's not for me. What has this, what has this pandemic done to people? What's it done to me? Oh, I don't know. So, what is the situation right now for travellers? Well, the travel situation is pretty dire. You know, there's no two ways about that, no beating about the bush. Uh, as for those wonderful Southeast Asian countries, well, they're very much closed to the public. Unless, of course, you're prepared to do that nauseating two-week prison hotel. And, you know, I wouldn't be, not at this moment in time. Besides, those Asian countries are in, the, are in the rainy season right now, the low season, when most people wouldn't be going there anyway. Whichever way you dress it up, the situation is not good and there's nothing really positive to talk about. I don't want to sound like a misery gut, but I'm just trying to be realistic. I'm not going to apologise if this has been a bit doomy and gloomy because at the end of the day you've got to be realistic. The situation right now for travellers is really, really dire. Uh, you should only go to countries that you really feel enthusiastic about. And the countries that I feel enthusiastic about are very much out of bounds right now. So let's hope the situation has improved before 2021 is out. So enough of me, enough about me moaning and groaning here. How about you? How are you all keeping? Uh, I'm, you know, it's, I haven't made, actually made a video for quite a long time. I've made quite a few live streams. I, I don't know what the situation is with that, but let's hope I can get everything back up and running pretty soon. I'd like to know how you're all keeping and whether you've got any travels planned for the future. Are you thinking positive or, you know, thinking totally negative? Let me know in the comments because I, I do read them all and, you know, I may even try and reply to so, some of them. So... I'll just say thanks for watching. I'm going to do a few more little videos like this, you know, walk and talk videos. And not only that, but on one positive note, there's a nice little, little old milestone that's creeping up on my channel pretty soon. So I want to make a video about that pretty soon, yeah? Okay, so listen, uh, thanks for watching. Keep thinking positive. Peace, love, goodwill to everyone. Have a great day, a great evening, at whatever you're doing, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.